extremely large increase in pressure is needed to compress a liquid, so a lot of effort is required. A gas can be easily compressed much smaller with much more smaller increase in pressure, which statement will explain this. Molecules repel each other very strongly when they're close, kind of like opposite of magnets, if you or like like magnets that they're repelling. The closer you bring them, the, the more they repel. So same with molecules. The closer they get, liquids, they're very close. That's why they're kind of more or less stuck there. But our liquids are generally considered in, incompressible, right? So they're so close, they have, they're repelling each other a lot. Why don't they fly away? They don't have that energy, right? Energy, right? So A is the answer. So let's look at B, C, and D. The attractive forces between molecules are small at large distance. The molecules in the gas, well, that's actually true, I guess. But yeah, like, no, not that, that, it's not direct. Like, you can call, say that's kind of true because they're further away. Actually, this is a bogus point. Like, people could think this is correct. I think this is more of an error point. You could say that, actually, you know? Anyway, the molecules, like I wouldn't say it, but I wouldn't be surprised if someone selected B. Not too surprised. The molecules in the gas collide with the walls of the container and we found that's true, but what about liquids? They're the ones more difficult. Liquids do that too. The molecules of a liquid are constantly moving. Uh, okay, they're all moving at random except for solids. The correct answer is A. A car of mass 800 kilograms has a forward acceleration of 2.5 meter per second so it's accelerating so it has an overall force acting on it result in force so it has multiple forces acting on it which result in a resultant force which gives it that acceleration so frictional force acting on one of the forces is the frictional force which acts backwards against the motion which we'll call force f for friction right which is equal to 1200 newtons. The forward, the resultant driving force, let's call it the resultant force. It's not the driving force, the resultant force, which is why the car is moving. There's also a driving force, yeah, uh, caused by the engine, so I'll call it Fe. Driving force is a little not non specific. Don't want to confuse people so essentially what the engine is doing is trying to race the car forward so it has that force being generated but it's being being fitted off being fought off by the frictional force so it's being reduced in its intensity and the resultant of that is the motion forward so the same logic or the same understanding or the same diagram is the resultant force how the car is behaving right now with 2.5 meter per second of acceleration is actually equal to the force generated by the engine but also counteracted by the force of friction right now the resultant force is just simply how the acceleration of the car because acceleration is the resultant of the result of the resultant. Picture that if you will, all right? So that's just mass equals to, that's just gonna be, or let's make that better. That's just going to be mass times acceleration, which is 800 kilograms times 2.5. All of this is equal to the force generated by the engine minus force fit being fitting off why am i using that word fitting off by the friction which is 1200 solve for fe we'll get our answer and that results in 2000 plus 1200 which is 3200 all right now, one easier way of narrowing it down is that the engine's force has to be at least higher than the friction, and that's why the car is moving forward, right? Does that make sense? If the, well, you can't have friction higher than the 
So if the friction was equal to the forward engine for generated by the uh, engine, if they were equal, if they were both 1200, the resultant force would be zero and the car wouldn't move. So if it's, you know, moving forward, so the engine force is higher than the friction force. So B and A were already ruled out. But we got the right answer by calculating. The correct answer is, I was gonna write A for some reason, it's D. All right. A length of thread is attached to the lamina. So I think lamina is just like a small hole or something, some sort of hook. So it's not too important and you're pulling it, right? So essentially, this is some big block. There's too, too much drawn over here, but it's a big uh, sort of random cardboard thing, which is, you know, nailed to a wall here, but it's free to move, rotate like a badly shaped punkah. But on this side, they made like another hole and they put a thread and they're pulling it with force F. So right now you want to figure out what's the moment. You can clearly figure out that the moment is going to be clockwise like that, because you're pulling it that way, right? It's going to move like that. But what is the moment? So a moment of a force, moment by the force is force times the distance. This distance has to be how far away the force is. So the acting force works in this line, right? This is the line it's working in. The force is actually, it's actually the perpendicular distance from the line of action of force to the point of the pivot. That's the distance, that's actually D, and that's actually equal to Y. So pi is our answer. The correct answer is C. All right, so on the left hand side, the pressure of the atmosphere is acting and pushing this liquid down. And they're calling that pressure P naught. And over here, the pressure of the gas, let's make it capital G, that's nicer. Pressure of the gas is trying to push it down, but it's not as strong as the atmospheric pressure, right? This is clearly greater atmospheric pressure. So the pressure of the gas is actually less than the atmospheric pressure, right? So with that in mind, you can rule out C because it's not equal to it. It's less than it. It's not P naught plus some value, some number, so it's not B, right? It could be D, we don't know, but it doesn't work like that. We have to work it out, but it could be A as well. And I think it's A, and I'll prove it to you. Why is it A? Is because the pressure, so this entire system is in equilibrium, right? So the pressure, if there was no gas over here, if, if this was complete vacuum, this could have kept going all the way in, right? All the way up, higher and higher. And the, what do you call it? Uh, but you need something to counteract it. So something is counteracting it. So the pressure of the gas is counteracting it. I think I missed a sentence in the middle. Oh well, anyway. So they're counteracting, so, but this is not strong enough to balance it out. You need something else to help it. The weight of the mercury is actually doing that, right? So the weight of the mercury is also causing a pressure because there's a certain height of it, right? So let's call it weight of the mercury for now. Weight of the mercury, right? But we don't know the weight or anything, but we know the density of mercury. So we can figure out the mass, or we can figure out the weight of it, right? That's the worst row I've ever written. So that's the weight. Plus, I also forgot to mention that of a certain height. So that's the density, that's the amount of mercury that's causing the, the weight of mercury causing that. 
but there's also the height column right so all of that because if this was higher if this mercury was even higher you'd understand that the pressure caused by the gas is even lesser so that's being caused by that and that's a negative value oh, sorry that's still positive pressure of gas same equation right nothing has changed PO. rearranging it making p pressure of the gas a subject you get atmospheric pressure minus the density of mercury times gravitational acceleration times the height of the mercury as our answer and that is the pressure of the gas correct answer is a oops correct answer is correct answer is a there is current in the resistor so that's electrical current and that's slowing the current down which is changing its energy right into internal not chemical because there's no chemical energy it's not food right like so it's internal energy electrical turns into uh internal i would have gone with heat or something but oh well internal that's not the option b is the answer a parallel beam of light is incident on a thin converging lens f is one focal point of the lens okay so that's one focal distance which ray diagram shows the light after it has passed options on the different the next slide but the first light ray is passing through the center and will keep on going it looks slightly bent but it won't move right now what uh, is going to happen to the other ray is I kind of keep forgetting so I have to remind myself if a parallel ray is parallel to the axis of the lens right it's coming in it's going to converge at the focal point right but this ray is not parallel it's actually already kind of converging towards the focal point so it's going to converge even more let's get the change of color and it's going to converge even more and probably form a you know, somewhere here so it's going to look something like that I'm just looking for one ray that's not bending, this one going straight in, and the second one bending even more. All right? Let's find that. Looking at the options. Looking at the options. We have C. That's doing it. All right? Correct answer is C. Two identical resistors connected in parallel have a total resistance of four. So uh, I don't remember the exact equation for parallel resistance, but I do know how you add them up. The total resistance in parallel, that would be total, is equal to each individual par parallel resistance, you know, but you, the inverse of it added so that's r1 and then that's r2 so on and so forth so the total resistance depending on how many resistance you have right so the total resistance is because uh, i don't like remembering formulas and this is much simpler to remember maybe slightly like you know it takes you an extra 10 seconds to work it out but you don't have to remember it so I'll, I'll i'll live my life how i want to right so the total resistance is four ohms so that's one over four right and it's not equal to four because the total resistance is actually one over four like it's at the denominator so i put four in the denominator and the other two resistance i don't know so i'll call them x all of this is equal to one over x plus one over x in gamma you know commonly yes so it's just going to be x right but on top it's going to be Wait, how do I do this again? Yeah, I think it's just going to be two, right? Because it's the same one over four. And if I solve this further, this should be x equals to 0 0.5. No, not 0 0.5. It can be right. X goes over there. Four multiplies. Yeah, it's going to be eight. I was doing the calculation wrong in my head. So the resistance is eight. All right, three identical lamps and three ammeters are connected as shown. 
So what? So they're identical. So whatever the resistance is over here, let's call it R. It's two R over here, right? So I one is the major current flowing in, and it's being divided over here like that. And because this, okay, let's take a closer look at I two and I three. So this current needs to separate, right? Like let's say traffic is coming in and it could either take Sharif Asal to go home or it could take Sadar to go home. Sadar at this time of the year has very little traffic or like there's very little traffic. So more traffic will go through Sadar and less traffic will go through Sharif Asal because there's already more resistance in the traffic, right? So there's more traffic for I2, more current for I2 than I3. Common sense, right? So I1 has to be the large because they're all coming from, you know, just finished their exams, they're all leaving the school, but they gotta go home, back to school. <laughs> Sorry, okay, never mind. Back to school, but they can either take two routes and so this is the highest one, this is the largest traffic, which gets divided into two. And I1 is actually the largest, then follows I2. That's where majority of the traffic is going because the resistance is the least. Then followed by the traffic of I3, which is the least because the resistance is the highest. Row 2 dieta. So what do we have here? They're not equal. Is I1 greater than I2? Yes. Is I2 equal to I3? No. That's wrong. I1, I3, I2. No. D is our answer. 